This is another episode of The Blossom Podcast, your number one source for everything bariatric surgery, from pre-op to post-op. Registered dietitian Alex Conception gives you real, raw tips and motivation through your journey. This is The Blossom Podcast. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to The Blossom Podcast. Today, I have a special guest, my friend and colleague Carissa Estrada. What's going on? What's up? What's up, Alex? Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm excited to hear your story. So Carissa works here at Blossom, but she also had the surgery. Yep. So first off, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I'm a mother of three. Um, I enjoy doing a lot. I mean, it's... Oh God. I mean, I'm super fun, super chill. I love working at Blossom. I love helping clients. I love guiding you through this process. So what do you what do you do here at Blossom? I'm a trusted advisor. So I, you know, I'm your first point of contact when you call in. I qualify you, get you through the program, get you scheduled, and help guide you through everything as far as that. So a lot of you listeners have probably heard Carissa's voice. As a matter of fact, she will be the voice of Blossom in terms of when you call in and the yep, recordings. That's and me. Press one for whatever. Press yes, two yes, for whatever. That's me. So that's gonna be Carissa's voice. That's awesome. I'm excited. I was like listening to that one when you were uh, when you were recording. I was like, damn yep. who that? Who I know that? it's exciting. How how long ago did you have your surgery? I had it about one year and four months ago. It's about a year and a half. Okay, so one and a half years out. And what, well, first off, just to paint a picture for the listeners, how tall are you? I'm five foot. Five foot, Mm -hmm. exactly. And what was your highest weight? Honestly, I'd say about 180 pounds. Okay, so that would put you at a BMI at about... Actually, let me calculate that real fast. That's right at 35 BMI. So a lot of listeners right now may think that they don't qualify because they're not heavy enough. So that is, that's a big factor. You know, with the latest literature in the ASMBS guidelines, you can actually qualify at what, 27? 27. 27 BMI. So There's actually a lot of bad stigma when it comes down to this, but a lot of people struggle. And there's a lot of different stories out there in terms of what is preventing you from losing the weight, you know, and a lot of people have tried it all. And this is just a tool. This is, there's no negative in terms of getting help or using a tool to help you get to that, uh, that healthy BMI, to the healthy weight, not only that confidence and all of those things. So what has been your struggles in terms of weight in the past? Honestly, I think it was just my relationship with food. Like I, I didn't know when to stop. You'd eat in excess and you never realized it until later that you know, you were, I, w- I guess I was just super comfortable. I got comfortable with my relationship and it came to a point where, you know, I was turning out pre-diabetic, got gestational diabetes when I was pregnant. Like all of that hit me and I do have family history with underlying conditions and that's something that I didn't want. I didn't want to wait till I got to that point Yeah. to... To then get this surgery, I wanted to prevent that from happening. So and you were I, already walking that line. Yeah, you were already. I walking was already. That line. Yeah, I was. I didn't there. even know that. Yeah. I didn't even know that in terms of the gestational diabetes and yeah. walking the line with diabetes. And those are also big factors too, because you can't. You can be essentially lighter in weight, but, but you still can still have. That, unhealthy yeah. yeah you can still be unhealthy but it's also preventable and that's yes. the biggest thing a lot of people think that just because everybody in their family has had diabetes it's almost like i'm just waiting to get diabetes no right. you may be predisposed to having diabetes but it is also preventable which has shown pretty much with everybody mm-hmm. um who's who's had who's had bariatric surgery right what's your current weight right now I'm 106 as of yesterday. 106. So you are down um, literally 74 That's me. pounds. Yes. That is amazing. And I'm happy. I'm super happy where I'm at. It took a lot of discipline. It took a lot of discipline to get here, but 
I, if I can go back, if, if I can do it again, I would. I, this is something that I don't regret doing. Yeah. It changed my life. I remember because everybody who, who gets a surgery, I like to take a before picture. Yeah. And you got the surgery right like during during lockdown, right? Or or what not not essentially lockdown, but we were we were not all in the office all right. at this time. So I couldn't get that before picture and then seeing you at like the Christmas party, I was like, dang, yeah. who is this? Right? Who is this? This is like a completely different person. So yeah. that that is amazing. Tell me about your your childhood in terms of your weight. So your weight history and were you skinny when you were younger? I was active, you know, I was, because I was in track, I did a lot of activity during my younger years, so I feel like my metabolism was very fast at that point, but then after I, you know, I turned 18, I had, you know, my first daughters when I started really putting on the weight, but I never noticed it, you know. You um, carry your weight well. Yeah, well, I carried it well, correct, so, and then I just noticed, like, through years, like, I gave birth again and I gave birth a third time. So to me, it's like, you know, life, life happens. And it brought me to that point to where I needed help. I needed a tool. Absolutely. With your pregnancy, do you mm-hmm. recall your highest weight during pregnancy and after pregnancy? Uh, I do, but I don't think it was at my highest being 180. Like, I, I think it may have gotten, because I was roughly around maybe 130 high school years and around when I was like about 18 years old. So I'd say pregnancy would probably be about 150. Okay. And then did you lose the weight after your first child? Yes, but not not a lot of it. So maybe about like 15 pounds, not much, uh-huh. but I didn't see the difference. Like I yeah. didn't see that I was still overweight. You know? Where do you think your relationship with food stems from? Honestly, I think from my childhood, like I grew up in a Mexican household where, you know, you never had a moment where you weren't eating, you know, you just like in the Filipino (laughs) household. It's like buffet style. My grandmother made a lot of buffet style meals and, you know, the convenience too of eating out was something that's easy. You know, you'd rather get a burger from McDonald's rather than make it at home or do it a healthier way. But I just think that growing the way that I grew up was just... I had a love for food that was toxic. I never noticed it, but I think it was just the way that we grew up as far as, you know, having buffet style meals. Yeah, and and you're not together unless you're eating. Exactly. Right? And that's how it is in in our culture as well. It's that food brings us together. Yes. You know, and having having the backyard stuff going on, yeah. inviting family over yeah. and even just the immediate family as well. It's like, okay, it's eating time. Let's uh this is the time that we can put everything down. We can set aside the schoolwork, yeah. the 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 work work yeah. and then just just enjoy each other's company. But it's abundant. Right. It's abundant. Not only that, with every party, it's just like so much more abundance. And in, in my culture too, everybody takes home food. You know, you're, <laughs> yes. and that's how, that's yeah. how the mom, the grandmas are always gonna be. Hey, here, take some here, food. Take, take some this. food. You're yeah. too skinny, right? And that's the issue too. They're like, you're too skinny. You gotta eat. You gotta eat. It's always a uh, there's a negative stigma in terms of having what we now know a proper portion. Right is essentially not enough culturally exactly you know and it's like what is that is that all you're eating yeah. is that all you're eating and see, no no here eat grandma. some more yeah eat some more yeah. here have some of this have some of that yeah. you know and that's and that's just how it is and are you now having three kids how, how old are they by the way so my oldest is 11 um then i have a nine-year-old and my two-year-old <laughs> Yeah, full house. <laughs> full house, Full baby. house. That is yes. wild. And in terms of your eating habits at home now and what you teach your kids, is it kind of the same or um, a balance between the both? Or There's definitely a balance because now, you know, after having surgery, I feel like I've become more disciplined. But I also want my children to be disciplined as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that now when I make meals, of course I have kids, so I have to have fun with food as well, but I feel like I do it now in healthier ways. Yeah, You know, we don't eat in excess no more. We don't eat excessively. We try to, we we make healthier choices. And I always say, if you lead with the protein and veggies, you're good. You're good. You know, and even if you have some discretionary calories, if you wanna have this or that, 
as long as you lead with the protein and be- veggies, it'll buffer. This tool yeah. will buffer that. Yes. Have you really restricted yourself as of lately? Being being a, a year and a half out, do you do you allow yourself treats? I do, but very like I try to stay very disciplined because I don't want to get. I put a lot of hard work in, so I don't want to say I failed. So yes, I'll treat myself maybe twice a month, um, but I'll try to do it where it's like at the beginning of the month and then maybe towards the end because it gives me something to work up to. Yeah. But I do still try to stay disciplined. And I also preach that in terms of planning yeah. a treat. Right. You know, because it essentially when you look forward to it, it tastes better. Yeah. You know, and it becomes yes. it, it becomes yes. more valuable. Uh, right. You know, as opposed to not restricting yourself, because when you can have anything at any time, then of course there's no value to it. Exactly. It's just it's just another meal. Exactly. It's not that, and then you end up feeling guilty yes. for it. But if you plan for it, like if you do like what I call Sunday fun days, you know, it's gonna be okay. Through the week, if you said no to the 10, 20 things that you you would have had that you could have mm-hmm. felt guilty for, right. now you would have eliminated all of those what ifs, mm-hmm. and then you can actually choose something that you really, really want. Yes. You know, and that's a, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, so when you were planning on having the surgery, mm-hmm. I recall you saying no in the beginning, yeah. right? Yeah, And I did. actually canceled. Yeah. If if uh, <laughs> if I recall correctly. Yes. Talk to me about that. Was was that um, just cold feet or did you have influence? I honestly feel like at that point I asked myself, do I really want to do this? Mm-hmm. Can I really change my eating habits? Is this something that I can dedicate my life to? And I think that at that moment, I was not mentally ready. I wasn't mentally ready to let the soda go, to let the junk, but it needed to leave. That's the toxic relationship I had to end. So I think I did, I got cold feet. And then, you know... Because I remember we had a conversation. We had a conversation to... um, you asking me like can i am i ever going to be able to have this again yeah. or 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 yeah. not and the answer is yes it's right. just about learning to balance right. and i'm an advocate of balance i yes. am a true believer that you can have whatever you want mm-hmm. but you cannot have whatever you want all the time exactly any time but so this will essentially teach you and 6 months is that magic window and that's yes. what i say Try to go as strict as you can for that first six month window because that is the magic window. If you don't lose a majority of your weight in the first six months, statistically, you won't. And that is not because you physically can't do it. It's because if you can't make a lifestyle change in the first six months when it's difficult, it's not likely you will when it gets easier. And it always gets easier. So a lot of people who fail down the line it's not because they're no longer restricted. It's right. because they've been consuming bad foods from the beginning. Right. You know, and this is where I also say that we are human and we will have moments of weakness. And I'm mm-hmm. sure in those first six months, in that first year, you've had many moments of weakness having yeah. three kids, mm-hmm. having a big Mexican family that loves to feed you, you know, yeah. so and those will happen. Those will happen, but as long as you lead with the protein and veggies, the tool will do its job right. and buffer the rest. Mm-hmm. You know, because realistically, it's going to be maybe a bite or two. Yeah, you won't even get enough in to enjoy it. So that's me. I put protein and veggies first. I listen to Alex. Perfect. Perfect. So <laughs> the influence from everybody around, what did that look like in the beginning? Oh, like I had people telling me, well, first day, you know, my coworkers, you know, I had, you know, some, some of them were motivating me. You can do this. You can do this. But internally, I didn't know if I really could. Mm -hmm. And then when I brought this up to family, it was like, Whoa, what are you doing? Hold on. You're jumping the bullet. This is, this is like too extreme, but they didn't understand that this was something I had to do for me. And then when I went to my primary care physician, they did not support me. Really? They, yeah, no. They they looked at me and literally told me, Carissa, you're you're not overweight. 
are you sure? Like, have you checked the BMI calculator? Because I'm considered morbidly obese. And but they just, you know, recommended I work out. And but I, I didn't have the privilege. Like I, you know, I don't have much privilege as far as going to the gym, working out five days a week to mm-hmm. lose the weight. I know it's doable, but you have I a family can't. to take care of, and the, it's not that you're not active. Right, right, right. And and uh, we get caught up in life. Yeah, we life get caught happens. Up in life. Yeah. So I think that that was it. But mainly, I what pushed me to do it was the support here. Like I knew if I ever, if I needed help, if I had questions, everyone here is available to help me. And this is the biggest support. I'm here the majority of my week and my day. So I just felt like I will always be supported and I have to believe it myself. Mm -hmm. So I had to be my biggest support. With being close to your family, right? And your family telling you that, whoa, how did you manage that? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of people that don't even tell their family at all because of that. Yeah. You know, but you you were honest with your family yeah. and you told them and they told you no, right. but you also listened to your gut. How did yeah. you manage that? Honestly, like I I had to get them informed. And and my mom, she never like she never understood why I wanted to take this route. But then after she learned more about Blossom and how this tool can help you lose the weight, like you said, it's a tool. It's not yeah. permanent. And sometimes we need that tool. I mean, I guess I was able to get her to understand why, my reason why I wanted to do this. And then I think her seeing my success afterwards and seeing me get my life back and being at the happiest is what made her change her point of view on it. So, I mean... How's her weight? She's actually, you know, she's she's never really had issues with her weight. Like she's always been able to maintain and just kind of keep a consistent weight. It's just me on the other hand. So that's another factor as well when yeah. when people don't understand in terms of weight management with, you know, like look at me, I could do it, you could do it too. Exactly. You know, it's like why don't you just do what I do? It's like, "Well, what do you do?" Like, right. Uh, nothing i'm just like this yeah. right i'm, I'm just, just like this, like this, this is yeah. how this is yeah. how god made me so yeah. I, I guess uh i guess i don't have any advice but you know yeah. don't <laughs> yeah. um so no i get that 100 percent, and I'm, I'm glad that she she came around and um supported you yeah also with that ha- is there anybody that you have to tiptoe around or my grandma my grandma she still forgets you know that I made this, I guess she forgets I had the surgery, but you know, she still will come around and say, Oh, are you even full? You didn't eat. Like, it's just, yeah, something just that she has the to old get used habits, to. Yeah. you know? And of course this is also the same person that's, that gives you the biggest plate yeah. and tells you keep on eating, mm-hmm. eat, eat, eat. And then if she forgets that you had the surgery, of course, it's like, what are you doing? Right. What are you doing? You're skinny. Yeah. You know, she, that's just, telling me. She's like, Oh, you know, you don't think you're too skinny, but I'm like, am I? Mm-hmm. No, I, I'm at an ideal, but I'm at my goal weight. I'm at a weight I've never been able to hit in my entire life. And you look amazing, by the Thank way. You. you look Thank amazing. You. <laughs> Do you exercise now? I do. So I don't. I don't go to the gym. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna do that. But well, I'm. It's not that I'm not gonna do it. I just haven't. You don't need the gym to get activity. Right. Right. So I mainly I I keep myself moving. Like I have to keep up with three kids. You know, I have to, you know, I try to hike, I try to walk, I find ways to stay active. I love hiking, I love to be outdoorsy, and even, you know, before surgery, I I couldn't even walk a mile. I couldn't, I didn't have that oomph, and I feel now, oh my gosh, like, let's go hiking, let's do something. I try to keep myself busy. Showing your kids that mom's got it. I got this. Right? Yes. Um... Any trails or anything that you would recommend? Uh, Lee Canyon. Um, Canyon. You go up to Mount Charleston, there's a lot of trails there. Um, To be honest, I can't come up with one on the top of my head. Yeah, Lee Canyon's a good one. There's so many. There's so many out there. (laughs) Fantastic. I like that. So walk us through your typical day right now in terms of food. Well, um, I try to eat multiple times throughout the day, but in very, you know, in 
in portions, right? Mm -hmm. So I do always like to start off my day with drinking my water. I want to start my water off. So I'll drink, um, like I'll drink a bottle of water and then I'll kind of wait it out because I can't even drink at the same yeah. time. I got to give it some time in between. But then after I do try to stick to, you know, a, like a balanced breakfast, I would say. Like I like healthy fats. So I don't want to lose too much weight than where I'm at now. So I'll incorporate like I'll do um, eggs or, you know, with avocado, something yeah. like that to start off my day as far as breakfast. And then I try to read because you will get full. So you kind of need to remind yourself to consistently eat throughout the day. Do you but use also, um, do you still drink protein shakes? Once in a blue moon. I'm not a big fan, but I would, I honestly replace those with like protein waters. But if I do have a protein shake, it's maybe like, if I do, it's probably one time throughout the day. Okay. Yeah. Cause a yeah. lot of people ask, so I need to be drinking the protein shakes, you know, for the rest of my life. If you can't get the protein via food, then yes, yeah, 100%. And, um, knowing how much you're eating and if you can, if you can, um, have some kind of control like you do in terms of planning out the day right. or at least like knowing and reminding yourself that you have to eat mm -hmm. as long as you lead with the protein it's it's not difficult to get 60 grams oh, especially with like three ounces of chicken which is you know half the size of your palm right that's already 20 to 30 grams of protein right, right there so being able to do that three times a day is not going to be difficult without protein shakes right. but some people also still struggle with that relationship with food right. and wanting all of the junk fortunately you've been able to rid of it and yeah. just have it as a treat but for those who are struggling with still wanting all of those foods and leading with what we grew up eating like getting a pop tart on you know be, right. on the way to school or right. before the bus and this is ingrained in us and then down the line before work or grabbing a bagel or a pastry <laughs> right. and a coffee before work it's just it's just culturally american yeah. to do to do the pastries and lead with the with the starches first so for those who are struggling with that that's where i say hey just have a protein shake to lead your day right and that way you can buffer all of that even if you want to have some kind of discretionary calorie that's perfectly fine as long as you have the protein first because it's gonna you're not gonna finish it or right. it's gonna take you all day to do it exactly mm -hmm. how many times have you had a donut and it just sat there <laughs> oh my gosh i haven't even i won't do that to myself i just won't but i mean like i've seen like i'll see the donuts or whatever but i to be honest with you i a lot of my cravings that i craved before surgery i no longer crave them like what it's were they not, oh my gosh i was a big sweet tooth person i loved <laughs> junk as far as like candy sweets chips stuff like that but my biggest thing was coke Oh my gosh. Do you incorporate any type of uh, carbonated beverages now? No. Oh no. I've stayed committed because I know if I do that, that's it. it, it that That's just saying bye to my life. So I just won't even try it. Yeah. Haven't done it and I'm just staying committed. I will that's not good. drink any carbonated beverage. It's like... Um, it's like managing an addiction, you yes. know, and having that Coke. I remember actually because our family was a very big Coke drinker. Ooh. Our family as well with the cans, Bad. and then we had that uh, can crusher in the on the wall because mm. there were, it was just too much to be yeah. able to manage, you know, on the recycling trays. Right. I don't know if you recall that, but <laughs> but yeah, we'd have to crush all the cans just to put it. So. I, I get it 100%. Mm -hmm. But for those who are struggling with that too, yes, I do recommend, again, waiting the, the first six months. Yes. But if you have to, you know, do something like a Perrier or Pellegrino and okay. then add some like Crystal Light to it. That way yeah. you're still getting kind of like a soda feel, right. you know. And like I said, things get easier but even like years down the line, you may still need to flatten it out too, oh, right. and that and that's right. that's you haven't you haven't tried it. No, you know, so, do it. Won't so that do it. that's good. Stick <laughs> to it. I'm not telling you that you should try it. If this is working, just stick to it, and okay. that that is awesome. So you're at your goal weight right now. Right? I am, I am, and I feel amazing. I love it. I love it. Good, yeah. good. So. What do you think led to your success right now in the last year and a half? Like the, some of the biggest factors. My kids. Like I wanted to be able to 
be an active mom. Like I want to keep up with them. I want to be able to enjoy my time. And not only that, but just to get my life back. I wanted to feel beautiful again. And, you know, and that's before I wouldn't take pictures. And now I'm just all photogenic. Yeah, like I, don't mind it. I love it. But just being comfortable and loving the skin I'm in was my main thing. Because if my children don't see me happy, they're not going to be happy. 100%. So I just, I wanted to find myself again. And I just feel like this, like I said, this is, this has been life changing for me. That's good. Cause kids are impressionable, yeah. you know, and they're going to learn. They learn from your attitude. They learn from the way that you act in life. And I'm glad that you were able to find that earlier on you know to for them to gain that impression yeah. and to keep the smiles and yeah. to be happy and to take pictures and to do the activities that you want to do yeah. those are huge the i do ask a lot of people well, as of lately to like yeah. what does success look like to you because a lot of people tie success to a number big one okay. you know and it is not sustainable long right. term what do you right. gain by being that number and in your case it is being confident being comfortable in your own skin yes. being able to participate with your children being a good role model mm -hmm. for your children and those are huge anchors down mm -hmm. the line because mm -hmm. if you now right now if you didn't have those anchors and you're at your goal weight what's next right right we're right. just gonna be we're just gonna be like okay well i made it now yeah. let me start introducing these foods again or we we just like lose sight of things if we don't have these anchors and why we're doing this outside of the scale you know? and energy was big too like I I have a lot more energy than I've ever had before and that was something also that I mean it's been great like to be able to have that energy to do what you want in that moment it's just amazing. Did you struggle with the energy in the beginning? Yes. A lot of people ask that question like you know I feel so tired I feel this yes. and that and I tell them like stick with it because your body is adapting right. to the lower calories. Right. As long as you're getting adequate protein you will you will sustain your metabolism right. support the lower calories and eventually there's going to be a switch mm -hmm. in terms of that energy. How what was your experience in that switch and how long would you say it took if you if you can recall I know it's like been a year and a half. I'd say, honestly, it was those first couple weeks because it was, you know, me being on that no chew diet. Like, I think that, you know, I felt weak. I felt weak, but any time that I would try to up my protein because that was kind of my source of food in that moment. So just kind of upping my protein helped me out as far as that. But those first couple weeks, yes, I felt weak. I felt no energy like i didn't want to really do much and i made that an excuse though because hey why not you're supposed to right. feel that way right but i didn't let it consume me no i have to get up i have to stick to the plan i have to you know i have to up my protein if i'm feeling weak i have to find alternative options and get that water and get the water and then in, it, yeah. would you say it was kind of like a like a switch yeah Really? It was, That's it awesome. Like switch, yeah. I, I love it. And it did turn off. It, it didn't still turn. has until this till this day. That's awesome. Yeah. So tell me when you had your surgery, I'm just trying to piece the timeline together yeah. from your surgery and and the lockdown. Right? So mm -hmm. you had your surgery and then we had the lockdown or was it a, we got back and when? then you had your surgery? I think we were here. I think we were in office around the time because my surgery date was September 11th of 2021. So I do believe that we were back in office. So the, yeah, I think this was before lockdown, I think. No, uh, so we locked down 2020 in March. That was when the world shut down. Okay. Right. And so yeah. and so when, he, when we started opening up the office for surgeries, then you had then you had yours, but we were still working from home. I I don't remember. Really? I feel You're, like I've been here forever. Like I I'm always in the office. You didn't had cuz we all worked from home for a while, right? And uh -huh. then And then we came back. And then we came back. Uh -huh. They I was doing like six months of tele telemedicine okay. uh, while everybody was coming into the office because we were a skeleton crew, right? So I was just thinking how you managed 
having the surgery and then being at home. Oh my gosh. Well, with everybody. So that that's kind of my point. With the surroundings of what got you here, how did you manage that? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Like it, it Or everybody wasn't... was just supportive. I think that after I did, yes, everyone had to be supportive at that point just to kind of, you know, understand. Um, but of course it was still like, why did you do this? You could have did it another way, you know, but I just, I always remembered my reason why, like it, it was manageable. It was, yeah. I knew why I did it and no one was going to tell me otherwise. I just, I knew my reasons why. Good. So, so yeah, that basically I'm just asking because a lot of people also struggled big time right. being in the setting that got them here, you know, yeah. and not in the fact that people couldn't leave the house. It's just you're you're hearing it's all harder, the, though. the yeah. same the same stuff. But I mean, we're we're past that now. Yeah. I was just like trying to dig into your experience a, yeah. a little bit. Because I can't remember. I'm like, I, was I? Home? But even when I even still even after though, like even now, like when I when we were working hybrid, like still being at home, it gives you access to a whole lot more. You know, so it makes it, oh man, you know, you can easily fall off track when you're yeah. at home. But I just, I remembered why, like that was always my go-to. I know why I'm doing this. I did this for a reason. I'm going to stay committed because I want to get to my ending point. So you had, you, you mentioned convenience also before. Do you still rely on convenience in terms of food? Absolutely not. So I you feel a hundred percent that... If I'm craving a burger, I can make it at home in a healthier way, minus the bun, right? Yeah. I can make anything that a fast food restaurant can make at home in my own way where I know what I'm putting into my food. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Dang, you are I'm super mom. Yes, Chef I am. Yes, I am. Super mom. So you, you go home and you cook all the food for your Every family? Day. Or do you, do you meal prep? Uh, so I, I sometimes meal prep, but there's times I don't, but I cook every day. Yeah, me too. Every single day. Me too. Because I like it fresh too. Me too. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit of a foodie <laughs> in that regard to where yeah. I really want the food fresh. And I can meal prep, but there's always got to be one like fresh meal oh, right. a day. Yeah. You know, so the lunches will be meal prep, but the dinners are going to be fresh. Right. But meal prepping is good too. Like I, if I start my weekend, I make like, because I'll try to make like, for example, I'll make like a chicken meal, right? And I like to meal prep that because that's my protein. So I'll take it to work. I'll yeah. like carry it with me, whatever the case, just to kind of keep protein first. Yeah. No, I love yeah. that. I love that a lot. What's your favorite protein shake if you do have a protein shake? Mm -hmm. The yeah. Premier Protein, they have a peanut butter Reese's flavor. It tastes just like a yeah. Reese's Yeah. And I like to that me, I love chocolate. I used to love chocolate <laughs> and sweet. So that... That's a great alternative option. If you're ever craving any sweet, that's definitely what I would try. So being a trusted advisor, mm -hmm. what are some of the frequent questions that you get that you can impart on the listeners right now? Well, um, let's say pre-op and post-op. Well, pre-op, I do get a lot of patients who are concerned about life after surgery. You know, am I going to be able to enjoy those same foods that I once loved? Yes, of course. 100%. Of course you are, but when it's the right time, right? I get a lot of people who, you know, who ask preoperatively too, how much weight am I going to lose? Everyone's different, but this journey's worth it. Mm -hmm. And those first six months is all trial and error, but you get to learn your body in a whole new way and you get to say yes or no. Yeah. I get mainly pre-op questions a lot, okay. but I always like to share my journey because I can help someone relate mm -hmm. to my story. Maybe somebody, you know, would relate to me. So I always like to just kind of input, give my stories, how, you know, how I came to be where I'm at. But I get a lot of patients who worry about post-op life afterwards. Am I going to get those? Am I going to be able to lose my weight in those first six months? Mm -hmm. um, you know, can I drink alcohol after? Stuff like that. But to me, I mean, hey. In that, for all of those questions, I do, again, just go back to the first six months and learning and building that foundation right. for long-term success. Yes. And um, in terms of how much weight you lose, that's why we do the metabolic test. 
Um, anybody can tell you a number, but right. that is clinical and that does not incorporate your actual metabolic right. rate. And what we discussed for, for your metabolism was actually right on the money, if, if we recall, and you were able to, within that first six months, lose, you know, I, I believe it was like 50, 60 pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and we were right there. As long as you follow the rules, you know, you can, you can get there. And of course, those are numbers that are not including going the extra mile because you're and i've said it a million times your metabolism is a reflection of your lifestyle leading up to this point and what you do is different than everybody else and after surgery what you do is different than anybody else so this is not time specific it's going to be lifestyle specific right right? because somebody can develop a passion for powerlifting and another person a passion for video games right two different lifestyles that will impact that body composition tremendously and your needs tremendously and what you do with even say you want to do like a marathon and you start training for a marathon Mm -hmm. but also as a disclaimer i always say do not eat for performance in the first six months (laughs) just let's get there let's build that foundation and then after six months if you still have that passion which you if you do and if it is a real passion you know you would have been able to sustain with the rules that we give you then you can eat for performance after you've built that foundation for long-term success because a lot of people can get a passion and lose a passion, but there is also a gym culture and whatever activity culture. And for power lifters, it's gummy bears before lifts. And then all of a sudden you're not lifting and you're just eating gummy bears. <laughs> yeah, you know, so yeah. that's, that's yeah. where it can really impact you. And that's why I say don't eat for performance uh, influenced by the culture, which is also not a bad thing. It's right. just that the the purpose is different and for us it's to get healthy it's to build that foundation to eliminate the stigma that we have learned and adopted from our parents and our grandparents and not always finishing the plate before you can even leave the table and with the portion sizes being huge and not leading with protein (laughs) all of those (laughs) things all of those things (laughs) so We've been chatting for like 40 minutes. I told you time flies, right? So Krista was a little nervous, you know, leading up to this. And I said, (laughs) we're just going to have a conversation. Watch. It's going to fly by. So we should wrap it up. But if there was one or two things that you want the listeners to know, like your absolutes, what would that be? You can do this. Don't stop. Keep going. Stay positive. Stay consistent. And whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. It's That's possible. Right. Anything it's is possible. possible That's why I say compliance is the compliance science. Compliance is the That's science. That's all it is. <laughs> compliance is the science. Yes, well, sir. that is amazing. Well, thank you so much for thank taking you for having me. time. I, we're literally on the clock right now. And I pulled her away from the phones because <laughs> I wanted okay. to hear yeah. the story. Yes. Um, but thank you for your time. This was awesome, and um, I'd love to have another conversation down the line. Yeah. And is there? I, I do have another question. Yeah. Would Would there be another milestone that you want to do in terms of uh, physically? Now that you are at your goal weight, mm-hmm. now that you are doing the activities, are there activities that you've limited yourself in the past that say, "Man, I've always wanted to dot dot dot." I want to tone myself up. I want to take my body to the next level. Yeah. I want to be Alex. Yeah. So that means you will have to get a gym membership. Yes, I will. But I do want to make that something as like a priority for myself because I know that, you know, exercising and like doing, incorporating the gym, it does give you a different power. Like it, it, it just can help in many ways. So right now that's my next milestone is just to keep maintaining, incorporate the gym and become like Alex. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my door is always open, I by know. the way. So you can always ask me for help I and I will give you, you know, a routine. Yeah. Okay. So yes, that, so I'm asking so I can hold you accountable oh, as well. That's it. That's okay. fine. Okay. Hold me accountable. We're, we're going to get some squats in. We're going to lift a little in, bit baby. of weights. That's and that's going to be the next step. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, thanks Carissa. Thank and you. And yeah, we'll we'll chat again soon. Sounds good. One more thing, if you guys have been considering bariatric surgery or have any questions, you can reach out at 855-BLOSSOM or you can inquire, get some additional information at blossom.com. Peace. Bye guys. (laughs) Thank you.
This was another episode of The Blossom Podcast. For more motivation and future episodes with Alex, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any life-changing moments. 